I know. wasn't actually. I wasn't. Yay. You see, you're, you're losing your touch. You don't. You, you you can't read me anymore. You can't. Read. Why? I I knew you'd started recording, and that's why I made the nine eleven joke. <laughs> I just thought you would have played it or reset it. Or oh shit! Okay. <laughs> Maybe you do got it. <laughs> and I didn't realize. Um, but yeah, you're right. Although, like I said, they didn't hear that. They didn't hear you introduce video. And obviously, every time, every time, every time, it's been some time, because it's always been at least a month. Um, but you know, last, last time we did this, it, it included March, April, and a bit of May. Um, and this one is just May. And obviously, it's, it's more May than was in the last one, but less overall at the same time. And that's kind of why I think I really like, spliced it up and like actually, you know, picked and ch chose certain things because there was like you know almost three months worth mm. so that was, it was a bit it was a bit different at the same time we are and I, I say this every time but we do do it every time as in we we ignore more and more every time um and that won't that won't be any different today it's gonna be even more and more ignored because a lot of answers just don't change and obviously i don't know saying you should take this a grain of salt is the right thing to say but you should say keep in mind that the people answering these questions are not at the very at the very top <laughs> their words matter but they're not they're not mickle <laughs> or sovereign yeah, although at one point they were um although that's actually not this and that is one of the um i guess slightly awkward things about this episode as well some of these things and we're not going to discuss them but i will point out um, you know, because like I said, we're going to ignore a lot of stuff, but I'm still going to point out some of the things that are outdated because of season four. Um, but there are some things that are still relevant, as in things that have either, you know, things that season four doesn't inherently disprove or, you know, have in it. Um, there's a bit of both of those things. Um, and it does make some things confusing. It does also, in my opinion, bring into question either how much these guys know or how much they're willing to say, but also the idea of when these things actually get done in development. And it's kind of hard to tell which one of those is the most um, truthful, whether it's because that thing only happened very late into season four development, or it's because they just don't know, or it's because they just can't say. It's a bit confusing in that sense, because it could be any of the three. Um, anyway... Can you actually like read this? If you if I ask you to read it, would you be able to? Any of this? Yeah. Like the Sometimes. very bottom one. Not the bottom one. Eleventh of this one. Can you read this for me? This is an eye test. Show how many times Betsy has been activated. Yeah, so I've seen that's just like a, a KPI a that yeah. And this is not the question. It's just like it's a very, very simple suggestion. It's also it's the kind of thing where I think, why did did someone really need to know how many times they've done that? You can see how many times you killed Betsy or killed Yeah, and, yeah. and that would be that really, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's like who the fuck isn't repairing Betsy? Yeah, and if the, you don't repair Betsy even after killing him, you clearly wouldn't care about how many times you've activated her. Exactly, right? exactly. And I um, I don't even, I don't particularly like having Betsy. I do actually like having Betsy, actually. I find it to be more of a benefit than a negative. So I still find it funny that she is detrimental in some ways, but I'll still always repair her because I can't be bothered to listen to the noise. <laughs> it's like pretty simple. <laughs> anyway. Nothing in the way. Yeah, obviously there's all of this um, crap here that we can ignore, um, like cross-platform and cross-play. It's all the same answers that you've seen before. Um, but then we get to something like, <laughs> recolor the medbay drones to have green too. Which they did, I think this is actually one of the updated ones, I didn't realise. But then they said, well, the colour red isn't banned, which is funny because they did change them to green. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a similar thing, another outdated one, is expand a soundtrack. <laughs> no plans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, you know, that might call into question how sudden was Trolls even. Like, well, that could have been, like, that's still a decent amount of time. That still would have, you know, that, that still allows them a couple of weeks to have worked on the song. So, 
Yeah, um, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think, as in, they probably would have found out a couple of weeks, because I, like we sort of talked about, um, and I, I, you know, not many people have done this, but I, I don't think it's really fair to try and stir up any trouble about this, because as far as we know, it is a very, um, I don't know the right word, I was about to say positive, but it's obviously not a positive. I, I just mean, Charles is leaving, but not, like, because <laughs> it was like, he was having a terrible time working there. That's all I'm saying. I feel like that kind of goes without saying, but, you know, it's all sort of backed up by the fact that they knew that he was leaving for quite a while, and that's the thing. It was planned long in advance. He didn't just storm out the door. As, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, he was willing to work on a final song before leaving. He was, he, I don't think he was even necessarily, like, you know, done. It was more so time to do something else, the idea. And he was willing to sort of leave things in a good place. So, yeah. yeah, but I guess this doesn't mean it was um, quite recent. Or at least that shows how quickly they can turn around a, a song. But at the same time, you know, uh, it was a song they'd already kind of made anyway. Okay, this is a, this is a bit weird. Um, suggestion, sell Matrix cores. Uh, unsurprisingly, the core system wasn't structured with trading in mind, and they'd rather not open the opportunity for RMT. Now, what is... RMT. I don't know. Should I know? Uh, the National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers. Yeah, it's, fa I, it's fair. I, I don't think you'd want that in, in your deep rock game. Well, I mean, there's a, a similar thing, which is just the suggestion of donating blank matrix course to other players. Um, which their response is actually a bit different because it's actually kind of, the, it would have been the same as the cell matrix scores one, it's just about, you know, the idea of trading. Um, so they, they gave a different answer, which is kind of explaining something else. That when they worked on machine events, they thought about inserting a blank for a teammate, but it was for one reason. Oh, right, actually, sorry. Um, I interpreted that answer wrong. But that's basically that you can insert blank calls for your teammates when you finish a machine event. That was something that they worked on. Um, which I think... It I don't know. I don't know if I would have been against that, to be honest. Um, I don't... It would obviously... It would have screwed over the whole if you're low level not having access to stuff, and like, you know, just having like a really high level player join your game and give everyone cause. It it would have affected the core grind, which they clearly cared a lot about um, for like a long majority of the time. So... I'm not surprised they didn't do it. No, nor am so I. It be a bad shout now with how loose the grind has gone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, we got two that I'm. I'm going to read them out separately, but I think I want to group them together. So we've got suggestion of new anomalies, um, not for season four, but possible in the future, and also the suggestion for new hazard warnings, on which there's nothing in the works right now. Do you think this is telling in some way? Um, I think because I think the response to anomalies is far more open, right? In the sense of yeah. them being far more open to it. I feel like words like not for season four specifically, where it's like, yeah, not this season. Do you know what I mean? That's kind of like, I feel like there's something telling about that kind of wording. Well, I think, right, because the way, the way that I would look at it in, in their perspective, and, and I think it works for both of the answers, is that they could slash should go out of their way to add an anomaly soon, right? Like next season. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we haven't had one in a very long time, so it will be a fair thing to add. Um, but with the warnings, if they occur soon, it's because that's just kind of how the content ended up being, not because they wanted to make more warnings. So there's mm -hmm. no plans for more warnings, but there is probably plans for more anomalies. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I would love to see an anomaly make its way into being like, um, like the headline feature for a season because I think an anomaly, because it's by nature, an anomaly can allow for a lot more. You know, we saw specifically in season three them breaking the boundaries of what a mutator is, um, and kind of it, it does. I can't really disagree that it paints a weird look, not inherently a bad look, but a weird look for itself and the other warnings. That you have one of them that is essentially a mission type. You find it in the mission type um, page on the uh, miners manual. And because it pushes like so far what the boundaries of warning are, in fact, it adds a primary objective 
Um, that something like that would have inherently been more suited to an anomaly because an anomaly is far easier to explain because you don't have to. As in, I feel like an anomaly can accommodate so much more, more extreme changes, um, to be honest, than a, than a warning because it doesn't really matter what you do with an anomaly. If an anomaly introduces a primary objective, that just seems to me just less complicated because none of the anomalies really align with each other anyway. They kind of just do what they want with them. So, and it, like, the one that sort of springs to mind to me is something like um, adding sort of microbiomes in caves, because that's not something that's inherently hazardous, but it's something that's best explained by something like an anomaly. That's just why I think it works. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't thinking like a microbiome inherently, but I'm thinking like, uh, an anomaly that would change the cave types that it would be. Like, you know, the, normally in your aquatic mission, it would be one big room with like maybe one or two um, segmented areas. It Maybe something like that would basically just change it to another mission's type, and that's its thing, or that it, it is like an anomaly that does its own thing um, and like has its own type of cave, um, which you would then like would then change all the other game modes like, yeah, probably like cubic on, cave that are just made of big blocks yeah. that suits an anomaly because that's like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> yeah yeah obviously new yeah. hazard warnings nothing that works right now good although there's something that they say about um warning specifically later on that does you know make me want certain things i think it's very specific with warnings where i don't want to see a warning be a uh, a seasonal headliner for a while <laughs> at least and i'll probably won't be happy if it ever happens again i just don't want to see it for a while and i'm probably and like i said i'm probably never going to be happy even if it does happen again um just keep it out of the way now um i don't think i want to touch carl to be honest and neither do they um i don't know if you agree we'll just move on from that yeah no i mean at best throw another bunch of vague things in there like nothing that concrete you could ever figure out that it's kind of, it's always been fairly vague references i think the things that are much more titillate well not even necessarily much more titillating but much more um i feel like much more deserving to be answered because they could have bigger gameplay implications are things like what a glyphy queen looks like or what the area cubes are used for those have i feel like better implications carl is the one that is much more suited to just being left as an urban legend um yeah I think yeah. Eric Cube, I think, have a place to be addressed um, and would be incredibly hype and worth it if they did it. But yeah, no, Carl, I mean, it wouldn't even pay off. It would only ruin it. Exactly. Is there actually anything they could do that would improve it from what it is currently? Um, yeah, Carl is, some, Carl is the one thing I think should stay a complete mystery because it can't serve a better purpose than that. Yeah. No? Like considering right now, there's like a, a a completely valid take where he never existed in the first place. Um, like that's always an interesting place for anything to be in the, like that kind of thing. But um, it would but, suck if it was actually revealed that he doesn't exist. <laughs> you know, it sucks that he was all a, a propaganda made up, or that he was a real dwarf, and here he is. He's here now. Any of that stuff would devalue all of it essentially. Um, like it's it, it, he would lose the mysticism and would just become like the boss code, which isn't a bad thing. But Carl is legendary, right? That's kind of the point. Um, Eric Cubes and the Glyphic Queen is not really that. Well, the Glyphic Queen is actually kind of legendary in all fairness, um, but it's also something that you could cash in and it probably benefit from it. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's like the easiest one because that's just yeah, like. Uh... It, it, Fight. Big fucking yeah, just a big fucking boss fight. That sort of um, that sort of uh, spells out what kind of gameplay it would be inherently, um, yeah. almost. And with the Eric Cube being whatever the smart style implies, which would sounds like an actual game mechanic. Um, plus, you do manually collect them; they are a real thing. The question is where they come from and what you do with them, not if they're real, right? So, if anything, it's Eric Eric Cubes that should be addressed. I would say. Yeah. Also, you don't have to yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I might reach breaking point at some point. Uh, suggestion: yeah. rework cargo crate stuff. Not sure what they mean by that. It could be um, like to do with a uh, the cargo crate getting bloated. I don't know, but it's just no plans. I mean, I don't really know what to say about that. But it was like not something. Um, I haven't 
particularly seen it asked before, but that's kind of because it's a bit of a meaningless suggestion. Uh, I don't know, rework cargo crate stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe grouping frameworks together could be a good thing for the future, but because I, I don't know how I feel about your um, philosophy that people should be happy to have like what feels like an endless amount of stuff to get from cargo crates. I, I the only reason I, I the reason I, main reason I disagree with it is only because it's disproportionately high compared to the other sources of cosmetics, like um, or mainly the lost pack. Um, they'll never, they'll never be able to fill all of them infinitely. But if they pump most of it into that one thing, you would always have something. Yeah, yeah. like whether or not that's they a, are kind of and have done with the overclocks, right? Well, not overclocks, but the uh, bank matrix cores um, has, a, I would say, equally huge pull, right? Like, uh, that's that. I don't see people shitting on that. But right? it's, that's because, um, that's because it's. That's because cargo crates aren't viewed as a grind. Because uh, I was about to say that's because matrix cores are a grind, although I couldn't have considered it a grind before the actual changes, right? Do you know what I mean? Because I don't... When I've, people called it the matrix core grind, um, even though it was time-gated. It's a grind. You can grind for them now, um, but you couldn't before. Anyway, it's, so it's a grind now, but like cargo crates aren't a grind, even though you could... Arguably have more control over that because you can just keep playing missions. <laughs> but even then, it's still a random chance to find one. Um, yeah, maybe there's just an argument for putting some of the frameworks in other places. I don't know. Well, that would be how they'd solve it. Yeah. I mean, what else? Like, they delete them. <laughs> Did they get rid of the bloat? Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, suggestion, drivable vehicles, um, unsurprisingly to me, actually, because it makes sense that they prototyped some when they were making escort duty, but ultimately decided not to go that route. I would like to see it now because um, they sort of moved on from the idea of es like idea of missions like escort duty, at least for like whatever the next mission type is that they make. I still love to see some kind of vehicle be used. And I feel like the power ups thing may be opens the door for that you could call the rocket boots a form of micro vehicle um and I, I feel like to an extent it might be a stretch but on principle it does potentially allow for something like this i don't know what it would be um yeah, i guess like a, a mini some sort of mini little tank <laughs> i don't know um that's the thing i don't really have great ideas for vehicles but um i don't know Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, but if they were to, I feel like maybe the new power-up system might allow for that. I don't know. If they wanted to do drivable vehicles, wanted to try their hand at that again. Um, I think it's just important to point out the fact that if they did do something like it, it wouldn't be like escort duty. It wouldn't be like a mission completely focused around this one vehicle. That could happen, but I doubt it. Um, this is pretty basic, and there's something similar to it later on, which is just more interactions with mission control for ping stuff, like, uh, obviously when he gets sick of you saying, uh, which, isn't there another one? There's another one, right? That they added? Yeah. Yeah, there's We're Rich and, um, I swear there's another one. I know it's Mushroom. It might be Mushroom. I think, I think they did put one in for Mushroom, and stuff like that. And, um, they said it might be while well, so it's more, even the last batch was had pretty stealthy, which I don't, not particularly... Um, meaningful answer. And I think it will happen if they see a good, uh, this good, good humor in it. I think one that gets suggested later on, um, which I guess we might we can sort of ignore this when we get to it now, is someone asking for like one for uh, the goose axe, which I think is actually um, very fair because you think about it, the mushroom thing you can only do in the uh, fungus box anyway, and the goose sack is only in uh, hollow bow. Um, and I feel like anything. I personally think they should add a generic one for just for spamming anything, though. <laughs> I think. Yeah, well, I think that that's something people need to make note of. But you know, he doesn't get pissed about you rocking and stoning all the time. He, he's he's more than more than happy to sit and listen to that nonstop. Um, it's just then, yeah, we're rich. Yeah, it would help. It would just sort of. Um, I know this kind of thing isn't that important, but it would help. Folks things feel a bit more natural if you just yeah just a generic am line and then you have that baseline and then you can sort of add more unique ones in if you like for something like the really specific ones like the goose sack um sure okay so 
this one sort of uh, is a bit like the vehicles thing. So suggesting of support drops like Betsy, which I find confusing because Betsy isn't a drop. Um, and obviously, a lot of people might might know about them having different support drops. Basically, things that were sort of um, things that you could sort of cycle between in in the uh, supply drop slot. Things like a sentry gun or a floodlight. I think it was actually just those two. Um, they were kind of scrapped. Huh? Oh, right. No. Um. They were kind of scrapped because those exact turrets were put on the minehead. I mean, that's what they mean. Um, but once again, I feel like this is maybe what the power-ups um, allow, could allow for again. A lot of people yeah. bring up support drops a lot. And at the same time, we do have implement things implemented like that. Like, I think Haxi, not as much, but definitely the Lifo tools. Like, for sure. That's something that you have to cool down for a specific purpose, and then you get to take them out and use them. Um, and I feel like I bring that up because I think that might be their preferred way of doing it. Have these things be put in for specific functions um, instead of just generic stuff. I feel like, you know, I feel like if they do add more power ups, it'd be much more carefully considered because they can't just throw in random sort of um, bonuses for no good reason, like a lot. I don't know how much, how much further the Rocket Beats thing would go, but they are obviously that. They are just a random big upgrade. Whereas something like the Lifo tools aren't. Um, but that's why I think they're random. Like the Lifo tools aren't random, for example. You, you know you're going to have to use them if you come across certain things. Those. And they're only useful for those specific things. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Or not. But obviously we can ignore stuff like four set of weapons and, and melee. But not grunts. Suggesting grunts with varying colour hues and limb size, etc. Limb size? Um, and they say variance doesn't automatically mean more fun. The current simplicity might look better. Plus, it might get away with biome coloration. Now then, I think that is inherently hypocritical, but also maybe not irrational. I feel like it really is um, a case of maybe the radioactive ones and the glacial strata ones are kind of just should be sort of seen as anomalies now, as in... It's just something they they've thought in the past, and now they've they're kind of done with. Yeah, they... truthfully speaking, they don't have a good reason to exist. More so than I think that's more like rational to say than they should make variants for every biome. You know, um, that's not even what they're saying. It, it was an idea on the Reddit, I'm pretty sure, where it's basically it's just arbitrary uh, color changing and like stat changing to like increase diversity. Um, and like while I'm somewhat fond of that idea because it will just inherently add more like enemies to fight and content in that regard i think deep rock doesn't suit that kind of type of like gameplay where it's essentially just like reskins and restatting and that's like, oh yeah new new enemies look hard um and i think that that's that's what that idea was it would be like i think it was like you know, it'd have a blue hue to torso, and then like the, the arms would be longer, so it'd have like more range, and it would like just like vary along with stuff like that, and it'd be like degrees of which it does it and all. Um, so like it, it gets like weaker or stronger depending on how bright the color is. Um, it's I don't know. It's kind of just content farming, really, uh, like for for the game essentially. It would just be able to for them to cheese shit tons of um, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think there's um more of an argument though when it comes to the biomes that would suit it, basically, right? Because you do have biomes like fungus bogs, like magma core and crystalline caverns that all have sort of a uh, element that you could tie to them. And that's where I, that's the only time where I think a decent argument comes in. I think it would be, as in, it would be arbitrary to make variants for every biome, but it wouldn't necessarily be arbitrary to make variants for those biomes because there's a specific route you could go, where like the fungus balls one are more resistant to poison, etc. Um, and I think those are the only ones that sort of fail that. Um, that's where I think an, an argument for that come in. That sort of thing you were talking about, though, of just like the changing like limb sizes or just having like ra them randomly being different colors, that stuff. I think is stupid. Um, but I think some biomes could justify it. Um, I think overall it might be hard to justify from a development standpoint. I would probably consider it something of a waste of time. Um, well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider it completely unjustified either. 
it wouldn't it's not it's not deep rock right it's like the enemies aren't just random types of the same enemy if you know what i mean like um i can't think of an example um like some games do that they just add like a shit ton of variants of like the same thing um and that's kind of how it has variants but in, in deep rock like your more damage grunt isn't just a grunt that's red and does more damage it's a grunt slasher right that kind of thing it has you know generally just a little bit more integrity to it um but also it's just kind of better looking um and it only like i mean i wouldn't say slightly it does limit the amount of stuff they can add because it takes a lot more effort than just changing the color but i think it pays off and i think that's how they see it as well um it's just kind of a better product when the content is more I don't know, polished we'll go with more um hmm i feel like justify is such a generic term but maybe that is the right term still but that's why i'm still a fan of like really weird specific stuff like for example we have like the um the ice bomber for some reason i'm a fan of that kind of thing i want to see more stuff like that as in not more goo bombers but just more um enemies picked out because for some reason it just struck them as a good idea to make a, a biome variant for that something like a radioactive detonator as in you wouldn't yeah. make a detonator for every bio but the radioactive detonator feels feels right it feels like something that should exist and, the same, and just by sheer like frequency of the suggestion so does like a magma core fire breathing praetorian you know um those kind of things but not just everything, just with multiple variations for no good reason. Um, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to put that. Um, change the nemesis. No plans. Holy shit. Very <laughs> revealing. Um, also, there's nothing wrong with the nemesis. Get good. Um, suggestion. New cave shapes. Probably not in season four, but at some point. Now, I don't know how to interpret that answer. I feel like it's also technically not true i think because it does do a sabotage thing but that's not a very broad addition um but the fact that it's so confident that it will happen i mean obviously we I, I feel like it's fair to say not planned because that's not how they work they don't have something like season five or six planned but they're still very confident that there'll be new case shapes whether that's just because they know that it's something they'll do again or it's because they know it will happen again via the means of a new mission type I don't know. I just find it a bit odd that they're that confident. <laughs> just like, yeah, that, just, of course they'll be they new how, cave types. They know how valuable it is. Yeah. Right? The cave shapes. And it's like the, some of the most important shit they can be doing, really. It breathes new life to like all the biome. Like, all, not all, not all biome. Well, just everything. Really, it breathes new life into the game um, to every like part of it, essentially. It's also not the most noticeable thing in the world. Like, it's not a lot of life. It's just incredibly diverse life. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not surprised. They they know that they're going to do more of it. They just don't know when. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Um, ignore this shit. Uh, suggestion, this, actually, this one could be updated. I think we'll have to sort of discuss this. Um, split loadouts for weapons and cosmetics. They say it would be nice. Uh, where some sourcing op for, options for the wardrobe might be due. We got some options like that, and I think it did do that. But as in the copy-pasting thing, I think that did sort out the split between weapons and cosmetic loadouts, right? Because you can copy and paste, you copy and paste them separately. You can copy and paste your wardrobe, and you can copy and paste your equipment. So I think that sorts that out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So even though it's not a direct, I think that is sorted, basically. That person should be happy because you obviously you can copy and paste your look onto a different loadout now. It sounds like they alluded to the sleeveless as well in saying that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. Obviously, this one isn't telling for the future of the game in any way, but I'm still going to mention it. Um. New music for season four, and they say no volume three. If that's what we're asking about, just because I think by that answer they might have known at this point, like yeah. not volume three. Um. But that's what it kind of feels like. Um, and I think I'm probably right. Maybe. It doesn't matter. Um, more music for the jukebox with the brackets of fan music. And they say it's all licensed, not made in-house. Fan music is much trickier because of the extra paperwork 
manage ownership rights. That stuff, there is going to be something separate about fan music, actually, in a bit. Um, but it's just more music for the jukebox. I mean, uh, whatever. I mean, it doesn't really need to happen. <laughs> I guess. And they did add more. It hasn't actually been the same selection forever. Um, I, guess not. I, think, although I think, I think the last time they added jukebox music, it was all of the uh, streamer-friendly ones. So I think. Maybe. I don't know. Um... Are you going to say something? I mean, you were. I mean, you were. I don't know if it's so important, though. I don't remember. Wow. Epic. Um, okay, so this next one, I find I did find the answer a bit confusing, and I think there's a chance that they might have been confused by the question, but I think there's something here. So there's someone asking to expand endgame content, and they say, hopefully there will be more game modes in the future, but not in Season 4. And they say no to endless defense mode, though. Now, I and I think we need to take what they mentioned about the endless mode and the wording of game modes. I don't. I think the reason why this works in response to something about endgame content is because they're not talking about mission types. I think they are talking about game modes like deep dives. Actually, I think. Um, no. No, I'm pretty sure. No, I'm not at all. Though there's I literally three that... reasons why I, I think I'm right. I think you're wrong because I don't think they see the game like that at all. I don't, I don't think they, they even have a picture of anything that isn't deep dives that's outside of the normal pool. I genuinely don't think that's a concept in their head. They never once alluded to anything like that being anything in their head. It, this alludes to it, though. Does it? In my opinion, it does. It's a response to someone asking about end game content. They use the term game modes and they mention the endless defense mode which would have to be something outside of normal missions so has it ever explicitly been said though other than like people that look at that more reasonably and be like that's not a normal mission no i mean i already suspected that what you're, what you're saying might be the case but i'm also suspecting that what i said could be the case as well um i don't think it's defined i think it's a little bit blurred unless I do also have the theory that they might see um, game modes as referring to not just missions, but also missions and and mutators and maybe even volumes. I don't know. Um, that's a little bit different. It's the only reason I sort of am trying to spin it is because if you don't spin it, it doesn't make sense when you look at the suggestion. Um yeah. But that doesn't they, that doesn't mean the answer the the answers aren't inherently relevant. Like there's ones where they're pretty clearly not relevant, and it's also not entirely irrelevant anyway. Um, it's only because deep dives are obviously in game content, although not anymore. They're in, they're they're ghost they they fit ghost ship's definition of end game content, but not the player base's definition. The player base's definition of end game is like post overclock grind, you know, um, which is a bit different to ghost ship's one. Um, so there's something about just the board game in retail stores, which I think should happen, but it's like, you know, they'd have to, they have to require a distributor. And I don't blame them for not planning on that. Also, not entirely handled by them anyway. So don't know. Ask someone else. Uh, I don't even know what this means. Um, anyway, it's also a collaboration question. So, um, uh, yeah, hmm, suggestion. Director's head on the terrain scanner. Uh, but then we wouldn't have the joy of going on a treasure hunt. I don't... Whatever. Yeah, maybe they could do the um, hologram above the head, like, with the... <laughs> no! <laughs> it's oh, just oh, Director's oh, head. It shouldn't have an icon saying it's Director's head when it's just Director's head. I don't Why know. Not? Director's head doesn't need to... No, I don't, I don't even want them to waste brain power thinking about Director's head. <laughs> uh, it's fair, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they bothered doing the hologram thing on the guns and wouldn't do it on other things. Uh, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. The more of clocks eventually. Cool. Uh, skins for the drop pod. Unlikely. That would be one player deciding what the drop pods look like, drop pogs, and they'd rather make something that all players get to engage with, which I. um. I find it a little bit weird, as in the answer. I find simple. the suggestion weirder in that it doesn't need to happen. Um, <laughs> it's a pretty simple answer, isn't it? Make whatever the skin for the drop pod is something that all players would engage with. Make it so players can like spray paint it or something. 
um in like yeah in the lobby and they can just do well, they have like a piece each that they're allowed to customize <laughs> well no i sorry, i think they should just add like um like graffiti cans to the space i know it's thick but i i think that good fucking luck with that <laughs> what what's wrong with that that's like nothing yeah exactly oh it would be a lot of work Mm. Or if it's just well, black, it would end up being like the lithofoma, like paint. Well, no, you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't add like projectiles to it. It would just be like a generic spray effect, and then it would just paint the text just black. <laughs> it would just paint the text. Okay. Um. Now I know what. The question means, but it could also mean more than what it means. Skins for class items, um, obviously no plans, but they think it would be okay to have those. Yes. Well, we know that they um they essentially give permission to the idea of a traversal and support tool cosmetics, although they're just not sure if it's something they can necessarily do. But it could also be referring to, or at least I'm going to refer to, something like um the the paint job. The weapon paint job in Season 4 that is actually class-specific, which is something that really doesn't happen. Um, the only other time a weapon paint job has been class-specific is when you combine Dark Future with um, uh, Neon Band. And also Robot Rebellion. So there's a couple of DLC ones, but that's also with a specific framework. It's kind of weird. Weapon paint jobs don't normally do that, so they've done that now. Although, like I said, I don't think that's actually what the person is referring to, but it's still... Kind of relevant to the idea, um, kind of. Um, but yeah, I think we should get port and traversal tool paint jobs. Although for some reason, once again, I feel like they're having an issue of like, but we have we would have to do frameworks as well though. But that would be so much work. So let's just, let's just not do it at all. <laughs> I I just feel like um, they could just do paint jobs and people would love it. Um, this next one is strange. In response someone suggesting dev armors like in terraria and they said they only get the chat badge if they're going to add more armors they might as well make them for community instead they completely misunderstood the question <laughs> the suggestion Surely they've never played it and know what they're going on about. The, yeah it's not what i mean i guess the person could have explained but maybe they did explain but then it just gets sort of lost in the soup i don't know obviously terraria dev armors are just dev sets either designed or Actually, I feel like in the context of Terraria, they could have all been individually designed. I assume that's the point, because it's probably, it doesn't take so much time to design a small actual pixel art set of armour. But they're sort of just inspired by or made by the devs, but they're still available in-game. Um, at the same time, I think dev items is a fine idea, but they couldn't make like an armour set for like every dev, obviously. <laughs> it's a bit different. Um, it's still in general a cool idea, but it, and it's just kind of funny that they completely misunderstood or just didn't un just didn't understand because they don't have the context uh, for the suggestion. I don't know either way. It's kind of funny. Um, uh, hmm. <laughs> well, it says copy paste loadouts, but then they say they can see it being a convenient feature, but no plans right now. <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? Are they lying? Or did it actually get added that late <laughs> into development? That's what that makes me wonder. Because um, that's 19th of May. Um, yeah. Weird. Um, take Steve to the space rig. Not in the plans, no. They should have um, a, a Steve somewhere to end up. I, I do think mm. that. I think they should. Uh, or, or all three, maybe. Just wandering around. Um, Space for customization, no plans, although they, although they talked about it, and they obviously they have talked about it. It's just like just a big question of two, what that really entails. Does it go beyond your cabin and, and things like that? It's an interesting discussion, um, and I'm glad that they sort of have talked about it. But I can also see why it would, you know, maybe just it's ignore it. down to more that, you know, if they had the time and energy to get away with doing it, they probably would, but... It's it's in no point in time going to be a priority for the game. It could also like, open floodgates. You know what I mean, right? Because like they might just start with the basic one, right? Which is the most um frequently suggested one, which is the ability to customize your own cabin, which makes sense because it's like your room. Um, but then as soon as they do that, I feel like suddenly they're going to get a lot more suggestions go beyond that as well. 
Um, yeah, I, I can see why it wouldn't be worth doing. But I do think it's still a cool idea. So, add DRG Survivor Preview as a mini game in the rig. Um, sounds cool, but also sounds like a lot of work. It does. Like, di as in directly doing that would definitely not be worth it. But I do uh, kind of like the idea of like a top-down, like pixelated shooter being added, and they call it DRG Survivor. This was like a reference. And that could even be um that could even be tied to a future power up. Because I was just thinking and the, uh, the uh pod zombies one where it's so weird. Yeah, like... Dead Ops Arcade. Yeah. Yeah, but like even more like arcade looking. Um because um just to sort of throw into the ether a much bigger idea, the LG Survivor has like weapons in it that Deep Rock doesn't have, and people, a couple of people have sort of taken those, what they've seen from like the little bits of footage that we've got. Although I guess it's gonna be more now because pe some people are playing it. Um, but there are weapons in that game that Deep Rock doesn't have, and people might be like, oh, are these like gonna be like future Deep Rock weapons? Almost definitely not. Um, unless they wanted to add something like those in a much more simple sense where you add like a binary form of that weapon as a power up, maybe. Um, not that the existence of it in Deep Rock Survivor demands that it be added to Deep Rock, but I'm just saying, if they've really I mean, got pestered about that, those things, I feel like they don't want to take from, even if it is part of the Deep Rock franchise, I don't think they want to take from that to do the next set of weapons, because one of them is literally just like a Tesla gun in Deep Rock Survivor, and as far as we yeah, know, they don't want to do that. Grenades in the board game. They, they literally, they made like four to five grenades for the board game, they then made grenades for the main game and didn't use any of them, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's like clearly they're not interested in copying themselves. Um, they are, they are going to throw a lot more half ass stuff into the other games. Like all the grenades that they added to the the, the board game seemed like really basic and simple, right? That that had the goo grenade, um, yeah, and, and stuff like that. But they wanted to go a step further in the main game, and I think that's. Probably going to apply with GOG Survivor. Um, it's going to have a, I wouldn't say lower like, tier of content, but like they're not going to push themselves far and beyond in ideas wise um, in those kind of off, off the main game games. Um, yeah, because like, I feel like I feel like a really strong argument for not doing something like that is like. Obviously, they don't copy from other games, but they do take a lot of inspiration from other games. But you can't take inspiration from a game that's part of your um, franchise, right? You can't take inspiration from another Deep Rock game. You either copy it or you don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, they can't, you know, they if they added one of the guns from Deep Rock Survivor, it would have to be the gun from Deep Rock Survivor. They couldn't just do something that's inspired by it. And I don't, I don't think they want to do that. I don't think they want to copy in any way. But it's obviously fine to be inspired by games outside of the Deep Rock IP. But you can't be inspired by yourself. Because then you're like, why don't you just do it exactly? So it makes perfect sense. Something like that. Although that went beyond just adding uh, the game into the game. Suggestion, a good suggestion, by the way, but I think there's good reasons against it. Mid-season updates for cut content. Um, because of the game's multi-platform nature, pushing out a chunk of content would actually delay future updates if done mid-season. I don't know quite know how the multi-platform thing factors in here, but I still think they're absolutely right in that they don't, you know, by a certain point, they're not working on the current season, and so they don't make content for the current season. Basically, well, I think it is like that's like it's not no work like finishing it right. Like having something be finished enough to then push out, um, and the effort that it takes pushing out would probably take the time away from actually just adding the stuff for later. Um, yeah, <laughs> the Clifford Stalker comes to mind because um, the Clifford Stalker is something that people have sort of found in the like in the code and stuff like that, and it's um. It was clearly a cut thing from season four, and they've kind of acknowledged that, and they've acknowledged it in the sense that, you know, we don't know how like hundred percent this is, but some a dev did sort of um, say something about how it's going to be in a later update. But basically, the point I'm making there is, I liked the idea of um, you know, I I fought back to a small meteor, right, and I thought, hmm, 
think it'd be really cool if they actually like finished up the stalker and put it in like a mid-season update or something but then you know we get that response but it's like in a later update and then you get this as well and you realize that it makes more sense it doesn't make as much sense to do that it makes more sense for something like the Diffid stalker to be saved for a later up like season rather than just being yeah. pushed out in the middle cool. season four for no reason right like it's like the next season with the Glyphid Stalker in, that is going to have more because, you know, and, and would have taken less time because it was already there. You know, which, you know, preferably people would have wanted cash in that now, but it's kind of too late for that, really. Um, so I don't know. It, it is, um, it's a good point. And it shows that they do know, slash, think about it, slash, have a reason why they don't do it. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty. Hard, yeah. I still think they are um, <laughs> sort of predisposed to do something of a mid-season update in the sense that I still take issue with the fact that you get like um, you know, it's happened only twice now, but it has happened twice now. We know that because I've seen enough of season four to know that they've done this with the the uh, assignment. Um, you go back to season three, you get Plagueful Part One and you get Plagueful Part Two, and they're two separate assignments, right? And then. They've done the same thing in Season 4. You get Critical Corruption Part 1 and Critical Corruption Part 2. There's two assignments, both available from the start. <laughs> Obviously, you have to do one up. You have to do Part 2 after Part 1, but it still doesn't quite make sense to me. They're already set up for that. At the same time, just an assignment on its own wouldn't be anything as well. I get that. Um, because but it's still kind of there. I, I don't it know. does have an actual voice lines like for the the narrative they're telling so it's probably just that it's taking two assignments to get it all out um, and that's probably why we're getting two would it i would maybe guess i think that it's still i think both of them together is actually still shorter than conquer hoxie's four though maybe What's conquer that's the very first really assignment. That's the first assignment. Yeah, it covers the entire game you can't use that <laughs> that's not a standard assignment <laughs> Yeah, but it shows that they don't, on a technical level, they don't have to split them. Okay, whatever. Well, it doesn't. Part that you're locked in, right? Yeah. They wouldn't want to lock you in for that long of a time. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yes. Yes. Um, okay, we don't need to talk about perks for obvious reasons. I hope, obvious reasons. Um, just to warnings like Mac Terra Plague and Swarm Again. Uh, they might add more if it makes sense. Every other swarm type makes sense to have its own warning just as much as these two do. And Swarmageddon was not too, like, long ago as an addition as well. But it was, like, added when they were specifically kind of making the point that the content they're making right now is kind of low effort. Um, yeah. Like, they're just getting content out there. They added double warnings as a thing because, like, it's a lot of content with very minimal effort. Um, and, like, the uh, Elite Threat... Like even though that probably wasn't minimal effort, that's why they kind of called it a day on that because it was getting too much for what they were yeah. trying to do. But they and have they um doing that as well. Yeah. They have really seized up on doing low effort stuff in this like uh, in this lane, in the lane of main gameplay stuff, in the lane of warnings and missions, and obviously a biome could never be low effort. But in the, in the vein of warnings, missions, and anomalies and stuff like that, they really seized up on doing anything low effort in that department. It feels like right. It feels like for some reason they couldn't justify themselves to themselves just making uh, a grunt apocalypse warning or you know a Praetorian one or um, I don't know what the, I don't the other ones. I guess would be difficult. I guess because they already kind of exist, like um, the plague one. In like a a big season, right? It wouldn't make sense in a season one or a season um, three. In a season two or a season four, it would have been fair enough. Jam, try and jam in as much content in a small amount of time um, while you know pin it rounding out the last season that kind of content I wonder if they um, I wonder if they think people are expecting that stuff to be themed though or if they've just locked themselves into thinking it should be I don't well, know it, clearly it doesn't really need to be I mean the beer and the, the rocket boots was basically entirely unrelated to the critical corruption team um, and no one called the bark on that. Well, no, I, I do. I do mean. St I wonder if they um, view things like warnings, missions, and anomalies as having to be themed now. Those things specifically. Um, oh, those. 
probably, yeah. Yeah, or, or I wonder if maybe they don't, but they think people they think that maybe people are expecting that now. I don't nobody, know. It, it, people should not be in that equation. It's like, nobody would care enough for that to be an issue. And if it isn't somebody, then it's like two. So like two people that were like, I don't know, this, this Gruntageddon or whatever, um, then it's not really... Um, Related to the theme, so I don't, I don't really like it as content. Take it away. Like no one's gonna fucking say that, um, and then Ghost Ship's not stupid enough to think people would say that either. I mean, I want, I want that more than a lot of things, to be honest. <laughs> a lot of people would want the kind of content that we feel like they're missing, and they probably know that they're missing it, but just haven't and can't quite muster the the energy to be like, okay, we need to just add all this stuff now. Or they, they realize you know it's kind of low quality content and it wouldn't add that much, um, and like but so it would come down to like a mass of people it being would. like, because um, that is the kind of content the the content that they probably already know they kind of want to add, um, but if the players vocally said please do they would, um, that that's the kind of content not that they've I don't think they've ever talked about Grunt again or whatever like well, okay um, so imagine we have Grunt Apocalypse Grunts and we have um. I don't know, tank division, which would just be more Praetorians and oppressors and stuff. Imagine getting both of them in a double warning. That's just like, you know, it would yeah. not, it would be cool to, ha it would be good, valuable content. Genuinely. I do not think there's much argument against it, to be honest. Um, and those would, be, those would be welcomed. But by the way, those two specifically would be far more welcomed and more, more appreciated than both Mactera play against Armageddon as well. <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Um, so they absolutely justify the, their existence. Um, I do think, just, you know, I do think just like the idea itself being good and justifying working on it are different things. Um, but I do think it, it's worth adding still. <laughs> I can't, I, you know, I, I, that's just my position on it. I think they should add w w more of warnings like that. That's what warnings should be for, in my opinion. Um, anyway, we're not going to get into that again. That rant again, Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so there's some stuff here and you can ignore. I think this is a bit odd. Uh, someone's suggesting bonuses for teams that play together. Now, I feel like, um, so the response is, it's an interesting idea, but not sure. It seems a little unfair that pre-made teams will always get that bonus, but not EUGs. Um, I think maybe, this is, obviously this isn't exactly what the person wrote originally, I don't think. I... Um, so I think they're referring to, or at least the devs are referring to, at least, are referring to people who play together, who are friends, or play consistently together, I don't know. Right, I, I, I think either there is a lapse in judge in like them understanding it, or like I think I just disagree with them because I think there is definitely an argument that teams that stick together should be rewarded more than the people that just join in because it would it would obviously it would slightly discourage like even like I mean it wouldn't discourage having teammates be there, but it would just encourage having your teammates stay around. Right, think um, about pre-made teams basically, um, the people who are. So, uh, are in the, people are in the lobby before the mission starts, basically. Yeah, right? and yeah. Th that would either be you know done like instantly, like they would all join before the mission, or like they would all join throughout a mission and then stick around for the next one. Do you think it would make? I'm not saying on this is my position, but do you think it would make more sense to almost add a small penalty for people who join when a mission's already started? No, but I, I don't think it makes sense to give the people who were there from the beginning a bonus. I, I think I'm not sure if either makes sense. But I, per, for some reason, the penalty makes a bit more sense to me. Well, because it, you shouldn't discourage people from joining other people's games, right? That doesn't make any sense because um, then you just get a bunch of solos or people that already know each other. Um, if you encourage people to join other people's games and stick around for long sessions because they are like notoriously better experiences for everyone involved, right? Like a group of randoms that just stick together for like an afternoon and um, we'll probably never see each other again. But in that time, they, you know, rock and stone and all that so stuff. You could almost factor in like rewards that are based on how much and what you did during a play session, basically. 
like from you joining that lobby to you leaving it it might give you a reward upon leaving it based on how much you did or the nature of what you did as well possibly how much time spent in mission like that with that team I... I'm not sure you want to be that specific because essentially you're going to be getting like good boy points by the end of it. Um, like good boy, you rock and stone seventeen times and you didn't see for your teammates. Here, have a medal. Um, but I think just I don't know, just a single uh, like you know like everyone alive reward, right? It would be like um, team uh, ability reward or some some crap like that, um, or just a teamwork reward. Um, where if like everyone's just stuck by each other the whole time, and it would be like an extra hundred credits or something, like it wouldn't be that much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. No, it shouldn't be. It should basically, it should almost not be um, about. Um, it, it shouldn't be about the money. It should literally just be about the fact that you did that. Yeah, it's just and, you, like, and you'd it, rather you'd rather see that on the end screen than not, basically. <laughs> and you'd... Well, it, it's it's just like it, it gives an extra something to the people that play the game. That I would argue, go ship these as their goal right i doubt that they want people just jumping into 20 minute done missions constantly that's not exactly how people they, they would probably want people to experience the games but they can't stop that and they shouldn't really stop that and that's how they want to play the game um but obviously you know they want people to join mid game and so i think generally speaking ghost ship probably seems their ideal way of playing the game as you know a team of slowly acquired built teams of just random people or friends obviously just playing together um, and i think if they wanted to reinforce that a little With bit more friends. a little tiny bonus probably wouldn't go amiss um, well, well, i see it yeah. what if i told you you're wrong i would disagree i'm never wrong oh fuck suggestion allow vertical zip lines it was tested very early on, but a lot of gameplay comes out of them not being able to go vertically. Ow. Explain. Plus, it looks janky. I don't give a fuck. They look stupid anyway. Um, yeah, I re <laughs> basically, I would love to be able to have vertical zip lines. Um, I think that'd be hilarious. Um, a lot of gameplay comes out of them not being able to go vertically. I guess that's the idea of you have to find the right position to shoot one from. Um, which is like the oh, basically the only engaging part about the zip lines, but even then, I'm sure a lot of people just find that frustrating. Um, well, the zip lines are inherently frustrating, and I feel like that's something you could levy against it or not against it, but like if they did allow it to be vertical, it wouldn't. Uh, well, the thing is, it, I don't know if they'd want that to be all the time because they probably it would go against their like reliable thing, like if the gunner could. Um, go up vertically. You would expect him to be able to do it like always. Um, but sorry, it'll be like that. Or like you know, it would be in a mod competing against something that's equally valuable. Like probably like increased speed during it. Like it's only ever vertical, but it actually like becomes not horrific to be on. Um, something like that. I feel like either way, it would all just kind of ruin the zip line. Um, like as in honestly, make it too short. Probably is is a more accurate way of putting it. Um, which um no gunner shouldn't have a giga op zip line um, the grappling hook probably not that no. probably not obviously not um suggestion order a beer pod to the cave no the silly stuff spent stays on the space room. what fuckhead came up with that response <laughs> literally Occasionally, a fucking bunny or a little Yuletide elf down there. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. That's not the right argument. That's not. That's different. That's time specific. But in general, you can go into a mission drunk, and the random advisor I consider to be quite silly. I mean, obviously, that's a, uh, you know, yes, sir, uh, different. But that, there's no way that wasn't already planned, or at least maybe even done by this point. Um. Um, uh, I, I, I like the idea though. People bring this up a lot of like, <laughs> like operating a brewery in the caves. Um, but either way, I mean, I, you know, okay, they said no silly stuff in the silly stuff is in space, but obviously the suggestion be a pod in the cave. I'm just thinking, what's the point? I guess. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm too mad. I just think it's a bit of a dumb response. It's just think, yeah. um, 
Yeah, unless there's some way to order like daily specials or something. They probably shouldn't do that. Or maybe you know, if you just want to do something real cheap, you just blow the the, like, the, the rocket boot boxes. You could just get like random daily specials from them. <laughs> you could just... That's I mean, real cheap, they... though. You wouldn't want the daily specials from them. You'd want the craft beers, right? You would want the ability to far explode your way all around the fucking caves down there. You know, no one gives a shit about getting dark more So fucking... I guess um a couple a couple of those are something. I guess um season moon rider and um yeah and flintlock delight and wormhole special all could um, technically have could technically benefit you without being changed in any pose. I guess maybe even even um Undertale Deluxe because you're a smaller target. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I I so I would have thrown this out there again. I really like the idea of the of the craft beers being somehow implemented into missions in a more deliberate manner, like genuinely, or any manner, obviously, because you you can go into mission drunk, but you can't go into mission with the effects of those beers. I think there's a way to do that, whether it just be turning like the burning love into just a basic fire grenade, or making it so that um you know Blackridge Blonde makes the enemies dance as well, just. I think there's a pretty strong idea there, and, and like you said, so you like people would actually like to have something like Flint Knock Delight. So give them that, and it's season moon rider, which is just low gravity, but in a drink. Yeah, sure. So actually, you know what? I'm actually on this guy's side now. I'm actually on this guy's <laughs> get beer in the caves. Right. Um, more balance to rival enemies. Uh, they did a balance past rival content in season three. Nothing planned for four, and I wonder if it's still required at this. I I don't know. I don't see people complaining all that much anymore. Um, I think they're just yeah, at this point they fine. are just different, you know. Yeah. They're not too much. They're really not like too bad. Um, and it's also just kind of too bad if you can't deal with them anymore, or by this point, yes. Um, but they are different. They do feel different to a majority of the enemies in terms of um actually how you're supposed to take them down, how they take you down. They are different to a majority of the creatures. There are distinct differences there, but. That is the nature of the rivals. Um, and I think the way they are is fine. Although sometimes you are, you know, quote, forced to encounter them um, by means of assignments. I think the stuff like um, the rival events are actually perfectly fine because obviously that stuff is, is optional. Um, obviously, it's like, yeah, also very rare. Yeah. Um, okay, I think, I think I want to pass over Molly customization. Because we've kind of done that before quite a few, quite a few times. It's quite a common thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, same with cosmetics with traversal tools, although this is where they do mention with all the frameworks and paint jobs. You don't, you just don't have to do the frameworks. You just don't have to. Yeah. Just... It, it wouldn't be worth it for most things. Exactly. Um, yeah, a lot of them are too small and insignificant and barely warrant a paint job. Uh, but then the other ones, like the drills... I think they're already good enough to where you wouldn't need a framework, right? Like, obviously, they could greatly benefit from it. You could get some fucking insane visuals from it. But you don't need it. They look good enough as is. Um, it's just the paint jobs that don't match the armor that are the issue. Oh, do you... Um, so, they could um, save themselves some trouble as well. I, I don't think they should necessarily create a new, like, um, category sort of in the game. As in, I don't think they should be making cosmetic, like, traversal tool skins from the gr ground up. Um, but I think that traversal tools are the ones that they should do more than utilities, as in, I like the fact this person only mentioned traversal tools, because utilities, you get, what is, I'm almost forgetting, oh yeah, you've got shield turrets, uh, that's actual charge, flare gun, flare gun's the only one that really works anyway, and then sentries, yeah, kind of, but traversal tools, they deserve it, and in my opinion... I would like to see them get the armor paint jobs more so. And that is almost entirely due to the drills as well. <laughs> um, I, 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 the way I see it, the entire um, utility and, and all that or like movement visuals is only really ever warranted due to the drills. Yeah, None of the others are actively there enough and significant enough and is like actively fucks over your look um, like the fucking drills. Um, like, Driller looked worse because of the no um, cosmetic, like, on them. 
and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, you're the only person who's ever talked about this. Not even true close to a percent. Close to a percent. <laughs> I've never seen anyone else talk about it. Um, I don't mean you're wrong either, but it's still yellow. Yeah. Most of his paint jobs are yellow. Um, oh, but really? I, I... Yes! <laughs> No. In the bet realm you of yellow. That more more of them don't use yellow as like at least a primary colour. Do this later. No. Um more complicated cave layouts. Making cave journeys is easy, but what's hard is making caves chaotic but also distinct and having internal coherence and logic. Quite the response. Um, like, so I guess that someone could, else gives more complexity then. They could make shit tons of cave layouts, but they would mostly look shit. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to be more complicated. They actually need to be almost the opposite because it's harder to make them. Although you don't inherently want them to be distinct, um, but you also don't want them to be um, completely like incomprehensible on a gameplay level either. You no. Know? Because if they're too distinct, you, I, I don't I don't inherently like the idea of recognising cave shapes all that often, but also if you overcomplicate them, then suddenly they're kind of shit to play in. So, you know, having more distinct um, pieces, presets, is better for the way that you... I mean, that's kind of how you have to do it to have a um, procedurally generated game anyway. So, and I feel like that kind of works in their favour. It's actually kind of good that you almost have recognisable cave layouts because it actually means that you can get better you know, the terrain isn't literally random. You you can know how to um you can almost know how to navigate certain terrain um going into a mission, like just because you recognise the kind of cave shapes. So oh I know this, especially point inspection, obviously. You know, I, I you you kind of know your way a point around. A, if you've been playing for a while, you kind of know your way around a point extraction mission already. You know, <laughs> before you get it, load into it. Um. I almost think that's kind of cool. So yeah, I don't think actually going more complicated is a way forward at all. Um, more variety would just inherently breed it. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Obviously, obviously, that's just a copy paste thing as well. Um, Tioji on snares. <laughs> Apparently, the snares isn't powerful enough to run Tioji. Hmm. No, probably not. I mean, it's obviously Tioji is a small game, but it's also not not. It's not not demanding. It's not, you know what I mean. Memory wise, it's not demanding, but you know other other ways it is kind of. Um, suggesting team up with Windrose for more music. Windrose did, ever I, I probably know. Do you know specifically what Windrose is? Heavy metal uh, diggy diggy. They did, yeah, they did the, heavy, the metal diggy diggy holes um cover. Dwarven thing which wouldn't stop getting spam posted to the reddit and you said it would be cool but they don't have any connection um and there's not well there's nothing to clean from that obviously but i do kind of like the idea of um not like a crossover not even necessarily a promotional thing but like um i don't know i feel like windrose would like deep rock themselves and just the idea just it, however it could come about it probably wouldn't it probably wouldn't be worth taking the time but just the idea of an in-universe band and they would be played by Windrose, but they probably wouldn't be called that. Um, well, I just mean if, that, if anything like that was to ever happen, I feel like involving Windrose makes a lot of sense. They have um, think, they have uh, a lot of conceptual connection with each other. Yeah, but I, I think generally speaking, nothing gameplay wise or like in game would really occur unless they had like a cute box. I well, mean, yeah, the cute... dwarves want maybe want to play Windrose's music while they're fighting yeah. themselves. Well, that, yeah, like, Windrose would basically do a song that is like. Obviously, deep rock, right? It's called like rock and stone or something. Yeah. If they covered the shanty, it would be a lot better. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good lyrically anyway, but it would still they would improve it a lot. <laughs> I think. Um, actually, no. I, I said that the shanty is actually quite good instrumentally, um, but at the same time, it's lyrically and vocally quite poor. <laughs> so they've at least improved the vocal sound. Either way, I, I would like to see them do something with like together. I, I would. Um and also that's not like um a, like a game crossover. That's something else. Um which is obviously mentioned here. And we're not going to talk about the crossover suggestion. 
Um, I don't even know if I really want to talk about this. April Fool's event with the devs voice acting. Apparently GST would have to pay them for voice acting first. Could be a joke, but it could also be a real thing that they would have to. I don't know. I feel like if I was working at GoShip, I would happily just like lend my voice to something quickly. I don't know. Um, but April Fool's is um, something people bring up quite often, but I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know what you would do with it, basically. Things come from it. Good things could come from it, but it's also, um, yeah. April Fool's is an opportunity. They should just like make like really fucking cool cosmetics and that you could only unlock on April Fool's. I don't know they would never do that, but I would do that um, just to be a bastard. Yeah. Anyway, so we got crossover. We got the Goose Sacks thing, which we talked about earlier. Um, you see, sometimes these things happen without being planned. Okay, great. Um... Add popular mods as game features. It's very case by case, but as a baseline, we shouldn't expect popular mods to be co-opted into the game, which is obviously exactly how it is. And it's also never going to be big mods, um, except uh, the randomizer. Obviously, that isn't a thing. I mean, the mission content randomizer. I would just, I would uh, only in the form of like a random mission anomaly. I can see that happening. But in general, yeah, don't expect mods to get added to the game. Um, idiots. Okay, the overclocks thing is just, we you know, already. Um, this is kind of um, the same thing about a uh, more complicated caves, but it's a slightly different answer. Uh, bigger, harder to navigate caves. No plan. Complexity free can already be pretty taxing. Think of the consoles. Also, plus, bigger doesn't automatically mean more fun. I agree that we don't need to go beyond the size of um, a length of a max length mine expedition. Like, ever, really. But I do think that maybe no, no other mission is that vast in that the actual size of the cave basically or the length of the cave you're traversing through i think there's a very strong argument for longer versions of missions that we've already got to be almost be equal to that but at the same time the reason that works is because it is mining expedition <laughs> so i feel like that doesn't work with any of the mission type really in fact not at all although some could you know like i feel like Refineries is something that's pretty static. They can get pretty big and they can also be really, really small. But it's always only ever three wells. So there's room for more variety there. For example. But yeah, they shouldn't go bigger than the biggest mine expeditions, in my opinion. Um or at least not in a single mission, you know. Um <laughs> Um Just new music. But I actually like this. Add fan music to the OST. They say that rights ownership makes it very complicated. Now, I do not know how this stuff works, right? I might just be talking at my ass here, right? But surely a fan can make a piece of music and can give their permission to go ship as long as they haven't copyrighted it. And that's fine, is it not? I think it's... it's um... As long as they give go ship some kind of permission that go ship can prove, you know? If they used it for like marketing, I think literally, I mean, you give consent to that if you publish it in their Discord or, or Reddit. You post like anything on there and they can use that for marketing. Um, but if they want to actually put it in their game, which they monetize pretty heavily, I think paperwork does have to get involved. And they would have to, you know, the person who made it would have to get some kind of pay as well. Right? Probably. And then that's not really um, worth that, that would be doing. Paperwork. Or, essentially, it is to say that you rein in, you give up your rights to earning any money to this song. It's, I mean, that's not the point of a fan game, really, is it? And they wouldn't bother adding it if they had to pay out for it, really. So, I, just, you know, they got I just think there's a lot of people who would make music and have let go ship at it free of charge. I guess maybe that's just not possible. Yeah, though. It would take a shit ton of paperwork to uh, do that. Yeah. If they say they, they can do it free of charge, they'd have to sign a contract saying that that is the case and they can't take it back i would imagine i mean they should hire duma as like their new uh sound guy um you know, anyway um merch george or they want to they, they, obviously they want to do merch. um more echoes in the caves a lot more echo could become disturbing got to keep it light there is a there is actually echo and when i think about it now it does change based on how big the cave is too doesn't it i think i i do Maybe. I'm not sure. Oh well. Echoes are cool. At least they're there. I don't think... I always forget that they have echoes, though. 
um, fixed chemical explosive bolt, um, which I didn't know was broken. And obviously they just tell the person where to go. But I believe it out because I didn't. Is there something wrong with it? As far as I know, there isn't. <laughs> so I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. All right. Okay. Last. This is the last one, um, which is the suggestion of an electric gun for Driller. Um, with a really dumb answer. When the third set was conceived, the game designer didn't much like the idea of Driller becoming the elemental weapons guy. So not likely. Yeah, that makes sense, given what happened, doesn't it? That makes perfect I, sense. It makes. You really, I. It's just they always fumble the reasoning, don't they? Like so often they <laughs> not say the right words as to why they didn't do something. It's I, always I, I think the actual guy I think the guy the game designer, I think he probably did have the right thing in mind, which was that I think we want to meant do that it. he didn't want to have the three default element elements, probably, yeah. right? Like, he didn't want the, you know, fire, ice and electric, which is fair. But to say elemental weapons guy is so dumb considering the search pump is an element. But like, <laughs> like he's the elemental weapons guy, and that got confirmed by his new primary being elemental yeah. once again. It doesn't matter which what element it was. It, it still made him it still look, locked that in. Because you know, there were some like theories or sort of you know, not expectation, but people were like and I might have, I don't think we said this because we weren't <laughs> we weren't doing YouTube at the time. But I might have thought it was possible that you know we got fire and ice. It doesn't mean that's like a, con a contained duo. So it doesn't mean his next weapon actually has to be elemental. But it was. <laughs> but it was. Yeah. So he is definitively the elemental weapons guy. Um, so I just find the response funny. <laughs> Causes that like the secondaries never even had to, but the wave cooker doubled down. I feel the wave like. cooker doubled down on that as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, although it didn't have to, but the the reason the wave cooker works as the reason the wave cooker does do that is because well, it's fairly elemental in its own right, I suppose. But it's also like you couldn't get very distinct different upgrades that like very clearly pair with the different primaries. If they weren't, if the primaries weren't very clearly defined by elements, you, know, you couldn't. It'd be very hard to make unique upgrades that pair with Gunner's primaries, for example. You know, like what would you? How would you even do that? Because there's nothing about them. It, it's it's completely based on the fact that Driller's primaries infect, inflict status effects, which are almost always inherently elemental. That makes the Wave Cooker able to have upgrades like that. You really couldn't do that for any other class. Um, so yeah, I think the way we could go, locks that in even further, um, which is kind of funny. Um, anyway, uh, it's over. <laughs> it's, over. <laughs> it's all over now. Um, yeah, it's over. Anyway, so yeah, okay, that was a dev Q and A for May. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like, subscribe, and keep in mind, um, I can't technically say we do these regularly because it's it's never the same amount of time in between each, in, in between each episode. But we do these when we should do them, basically. As long as at least a month has passed and it's been like updated reasonably in the sense that there's enough to go on, then we do it. So you'll you'll see these when they make sense. Um, so as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being cool. Tyler, any last words? Hamburger. Why are they called hamburgers? Hamburger. I used to think it was handburger. Hands. Like, as in, no, handburger, as in, like, because you can fit it in your hand. That's what I used to think. <laughs> and. It's not made of ham. It really is stupid as hell. It is dumb as hell. It's, oh, it's, it's just not made of ham. It's not made of pig at all. I don't know if a hamburger is one that oh, like specifically has bacon in it, but they don't call them that. They call them bacon cheeseburgers. They call them bacon. Yeah. And I think they'll be called cheeseburgers even when they don't have cheese in them. Oh, dear. Sandwiches and deep rock, please. All right. Hold on. We're going to get to one hour, 19 minutes, 19 seconds. So... Okay, yeah. Right, three, two, one.